everyone, Terry Vincent here with Stormwind.com answering another set of questions provided by students. Yesterday after I posted my video on Ethernet over MPLS, I got a bunch of other questions associated with the exact same topic. First of all, one of them was, is, is it possible to do something other than Ethernet? Well, obviously it is. We talked in the course of our route discussions where we were saying that we could use frame relay. And that's one of the things I want to illustrate here. And that is a natural segue into one of the other questions. And that was, Terry, how do I configure a frame relay switch? Well, we're going to do that. And it's a very simple process. And only we're going to do, we're going to actually step off and we're going to make it to where we're going to employ frame relay over the MPLS cloud in the same fashion that we did when we were talking about Ethernet over MPLS. The third question was, can I do this in GNS3? Well, what I've done is I've created a scenario using Frame Relay in GNS3, and it looks something like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this particular configuration, and we're going to, first of all, make some base verifications. Notice we always want to verify that our cloud is working exactly the way we want it to work. Now, in order to be able to do this, we're going to bring up our equipment, and we're going to start with R1. It's going to be our interfaces with R1 that is going to be where we can best determine whether or not we have everything set up in our service provider cloud properly. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to verify that we have our LDP neighbors. Second, we're going to make certain that we have our routes. Remember, we're running OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, as our IGP. And we want to make certain that all of those mechanisms are working. So it's very simple to verify that. All we do is we go to the command line on R1, and we type show MPLS LDP neighbors and this is going to tell us who we formed adjacencies with. We formed an adjacency with R3 and we formed an adjacency with R2. Now the other part of this is, is, is our routing protocol working? Show IP in route OSPF. We are learning about the prefixes to on R2 and we're learning about prefixes on R3. So now it's very simple to do the last part of the verification here, and that's going to be to ping these resources. And also what I want to do is I want to do a trace route from one of the PE devices, in this case R2 or R3, to demonstrate that the cloud is actually doing packet switching. So here's what we're going to do. We'll go over to R2, and what we'll do is we'll first execute that ping. We'll do ping. And I'm going to ping the other end of the equation, 3.3.3. I'm going to source it from my loopback zero just to make sure that that's being communicated. And we can see that I have reachability. Now, the interesting element here is, is that I have reachability across R1. So what we'll do now is let's do that trace route. We'll do a trace route. And we'll say we want to reach 3.3.3. And again, I'm going to source it from my loopback zero interface. Now, notice right here. MPLS label 17. We can see very clearly that we have just utilized packet label switching, MPLS, in order to be able to move packets back and forth. So this gives us a good idea as to whether or not the service provider cloud configuration is correct. Now what I want to do is I want to go to the customer devices, the CEs. In this instance, it's going to be R4 and R5. And what we're going to do when we get there is we're going to verify our frame relay configuration. So what happens on these devices? When we go to R4, for instance, we can do show frame map. And we can see that we're running a frame relay mapping configuration where to reach 10.1.200.5, we're going to be using Dell C405. That's our layer two virtual circuit. Now notice it says deleted. Now if we remember, or at least if we think back to our studies back at CCNA and the second part in ICND2 when we talked about frame relay, we learned that we have different statuses. We have active, we have deleted, and we have inactive. Typically when we see deleted that tells us there's something wrong between us and the frame relay switch. Well the exact idea here is, is that we're not running a frame relay switch. So I've already demonstrated that we can do this in GNS3, so this begs the question that I got asked earlier, and that is, is how do I create a frame relay switch? Well, we're going to create a frame relay switch, but we're going to create a special type of frame relay switch. It's going to be one that's going to use MPLS Layer 2 tunnels. So what we'll do is let's go over to R2, and what we'll do once we're there, let's take a look and see, are we running show frame map? Are we running any frame relay? Let's do show frame route and see if we're doing any frame relay routing. So no, we're not. 
So this makes it very, very clear that we're not operating as a frame switch. Let's change that behavior. We can do that very simply. First of all, at the global configuration level, all we do is we type frame relay switch. So frame relay switching is now activated on this device. Now, if we look at the illustration on R2, let me drag the drawing down here just a little bit. On R2, we see that we are connected via serial 00. So that's where we need to make our configurations on both R2 and on R3. So what that's going to look like is, is we go under the interface, serial 00, and we're going to say frame or encapsulation frame relay. Now what I'm also going to do is just I'm going to do no frame relay inverse ARP because I don't like to leave that running. We're not going to assign any IP addresses, but what we need to do is we need to tell the system that we are going to be the clock for the frame relay configuration. So that's going to be frame relay interface type DCE for data communications equipment. Now what we've done is we've told the system we're going to provide clocking. But the other part of this that we need to do is obviously to bring the interface up. Now at this point, if we're creating just a regular frame relay switch, we could configure our frame route configurations where we're going to send information between interfaces. We only have one interface that we're going to be working with, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a configuration for it, and then instead of sending it to another physical interface, we're going to send it to our MPLS cloud. So this is what that's going to look like. So if we go back over here to the equipment, what we find ourselves in is we find ourselves in a situation where we, what we need to do is we need to use the connect command. Now, what we did yesterday or in the previous example was is I used xConnect. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to use xConnect. It's just what we're going to write at this particular juncture is, is employ the connect command to create our frame relay infrastructure. So, for instance, I need to be able to define the Dell C so that it will no longer be deleted on the attached device. For instance, in this particular part of the discussion, R4. So, what we'll do here is, is let's go ahead and set that up. We'll type in connect. And what we'll do is just use the question mark. So what we need to do is come up with a naming convention. So I'm going to say R2 to R3, because this is what I'm going to be connecting, set up the system for. And notice now I have to specify the interface. So I'm going to go serial 00. My next option is, is I can define my DELCs. Now notice I'm using DELC 405 between R4 and R2, and 504 between R5 and R3. Well, let's take a look and see exactly what happens when we set this up. So we're on R2, so we're going to use DELC 405. Now, the thing that I need to under, you guys to understand is, is we have a number of options. Typically, on a regular old-fashioned single router acting as a frame switch, all I would do is just tell it to switch it to another interface. And by virtue of using the, the connect command, I just use one command, and that sets up both configurations. If I were using the frame route options, I would have to do that under each individual interface, and I would have to point it in the opposite direction. So this makes the configuration a lot easier. But what we also need to keep in mind is, is that as we make this configuration, we are going to be using a layer 2 transport mechanism. And that layer 2 transport mechanism is going to be the idea of the ATOM configuration. Now what we're doing, the net effect, is, is that we're going to be building a pseudo wire. In other words, a pseudo wire is going to be just a logical connection between devices very similar to and best described as a layer 2 VPN. Now, again, we have that whole idea of layer 3 VPNs in the context of MPLS, but that's not part of our conversation right now. That'll come later. So right now, all we want to do is just see if we can make frame relay work. Now, we did connect to set up the frame relay routing mechanisms, but what we also need to do now is, is since we defined we're going to do, use a layer 2 transport, we need to identify what that is, and that's where we're going to use the xConnect command that we employed in the last video. So what we'll do is over here on R2, we need to use xConnect, and we're going to do it in the subcontext of PW-switching for our frame relay config. Now we're on R2, so we're going to attempt to connect to 3.3.3, because we're going to build a tunnel between R2 and R3. And notice we need to specify our virtual channel. We use 200, so I'll just keep that consistent. As long as it's the same on both ends, we're going to be perfectly fine. And we're going to specify encapsulation. And remember, we're going to use MPLS. So what just ended up happening is we've set up one side of a Layer 2 VPN tunnel using our MPLS. So what we'll do is we'll do show MPLS Layer 2 transport 
VC and just hit enter and notice that we have the tunnel attempting to be put in place and notice it's employing a logical circuit now but its status is down. That's because we haven't set it up on the other end. What I want to do is I want to go to R4 and see if we have a change in status on R4 that's going to let us know whether or not we have any type of configuration. Well, notice right now we changed. We went from deleted to an inactive. Now, just again, to revisit our concept about frame relay, deleted means that typically there's a problem between us and a frame relay switch. Inactive typically means that there's something on the other side or inside the frame relay cloud. Now, we've got an actual frame relay cloud, or at least half of one. So if we go in and we make the configurations on the other end, we should be able to see our interfaces come up. So let's try that. We'll go over to R3, and we'll make the configurations there. So pretty much the same scenario. We need to turn it into a frame switch. Frame relay, switching. Done. Interface serial zero, zero. We need to do encapsulation. Frame relay, no frame relay, inverse arc. Then what we'll end up doing under this particular area is we need to also say that we are going to be the DC end of the link. And it's going to be type DCE, no shut. Now what we need to do is configure the actual mapping using, again, the connect command. The connect command is what's going to make all of this possible. So we do that, and then once we do that, we'll go into the subcontext, and that's where we'll be defining our XConnect configuration. So to wrap this up, what we're going to do is we're going to do connect. This time I'm going to say from R3 to R2, I'm going to specify serial 00. Now I'm going to define my Del C. In this instance, it's 504. And instead of sending it to another interface, we're going to send it to a layer 2 transport press enter and that's going to put us in the configuration subcontext where now what we're going to do is use the xconnect command. That's going to build the last half of that tunnel and if we get it up and operational we should have reachability between our two devices using frame relay over MPLS. Let's take a look and see if it actually works. xconnect 2.2.2 our VC is 200 and I want to use encapsulation MPLS and like I said, if I get my sums right, we should get a peering relationship between us and R2 via LDP, which we see now. Let's see if our link is up. Show MPLS LD or layer two transport VC. Notice it is now up. Again, we're connected to a logical virtual circuit. Layer two, that's what we're talking about. Delsies are layer two components or layer two, layer two logical constructs. And now, what we should be able to do is, let's take a look at the details of this. So show MPLS LD, I'm sorry, M, uh, MPLS layer two transport VC detail. And notice we have this link. Now, right now we're not sending and receiving any kind of packets. That's kind of got me concerned. But let's go over to our other device, uh, which is R5, and see what the status of our link is. Notice it comes up and says serial zero zero is now up. Show frame map. Notice it's now active. If we go over to R4, we should see the same thing. So we've actually, if we've got our sums right, we've gone from deleted to inactive to active, which means we've seen all three logical states associated with our frame relay configuration commands and our frame relay topology. So at this particular juncture, let's see if we can actually initiate a ping from one of these devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping 10.1.200.5, and I want to repeat 1,000 times. Now, this is going to take just a little bit, but the idea is, is what I want to do is I want to go back over to, say, R3, and let's execute this command and see if we get incrementing received values. Notice now we're moving packets. We have received and sent, and every second, those are incrementing. And we can see, based on our configuration, that on R4, we are successfully executing our pings. So at this particular juncture, we've demonstrated that we can configure a frame relay switch very, very easily. In fact, we can configure a frame relay switch integrated with MPLS such that we can uh, obtain layer two 
connectivity via our MPLS cloud using something other than Ethernet. We've demonstrated that we can do this inside the context of GNS using 3725s running 12.5 uh, code with regard to iOS. And we've also demonstrated the fact that we can still set up our systems with regard to working with EIGRP, which is what we're talking about, between our devices. So all I want to do right now is I'm going to set that up and then we'll call this quits. What we'll do is we'll go here to R4, config T, router, EIGRP, 100, no auto, network, and I'm just going to advertise everything. We'll go over to R5, config T, that's going to be router, EIGRP, 100, no auto, network, And if we got our sums right, we will form an EIGRP peering, which we've done. Show IP EIGRP neighbors. We formed a relationship with 10.1.200, and let's do a trace route. So we will ping to 10.1.200.4, not ping, but trace route. And we'll source it from our loopback to see what happens. And notice immediately we have reachability and it only shows one hop show IP interface brief or show IP route I don't think I'm advertising any loopbacks but we'll see EIGRP and I am learning one from four so I can ping 4.4.4 .4 which demonstrates that the topology is up operational and fully configured so as I said it's pretty straightforward and it's simple and again I appreciate the feedback Please keep sending me your questions. I'll do my very best to make certain that you guys get a reply and look for these replies sometime next week on the stormwind.com video blog. Till then, have a great day. Bye.